Hi, this is Dave from Retired Time Productions, and welcome to the Polaris XL Build Project, Part 5. Alright, so the bottom of the fuselage is dry, so let's just go ahead and remove the tape. And then we'll do a little sanding. Because the edges stick out a little bit in different places, and we need to sand them down. Okay, using my coarse sanding block, I'm just going to start sanding the edges. Just get them flush. And they recommend you leave a sharp edge here. Don't round them off because it tracks in the water better if you leave a sharp edge. So just leave it sharp. Just make sure it's flush to the sides. Okay, that's both sides, and I've got the back too here. And now I'm going to finish off the nose. Right here, just do the nose. Now at this point, what the directions recommend is going and caulking in the inside of the fuselage down here at the bottom to get rid of any leaks because there are some places where water could get through where it's glued on the edges. But I think what I'm going to do instead, since I'm going to be using this on grass as well as water, I think what I'm going to do is laminate the bottom. I'm going to laminate the, actually laminate the sides and the bottom of the fuselage and that's to seal off any leaks along the edges so then all I got to do is worry about the nose which I'll glue on later and I'll probably laminate the nose as well just for reinforcement okay I'm starting the lamination process right here and I don't know if you can see it this is 1.7 mil lamination and some people say you can't laminate Depron but I disagree and if you notice right here, this part hasn't been heated yet, so I'll just run the iron over it. And when, you, when I run the iron over it, you can see it sticks. That's all it takes. You don't have to put a ton of heat on it and melt a Depron or anything. But once it gets like that, it's on there. So I'm going to go ahead and laminate this side. And then I'm going to flip it over, laminate the other side. And then I'm going to use a little heavier lamination on the bottom. For the skid plate and that'll be the three mil so well, I'm gonna go ahead and finish this side and then move to the next now that's the side done now it's folding around on the bottom now to do the bottom I'm gonna have to cut uh, some slits where these wrinkles are to let that lay flat because this is a curved surface so what I'm gonna do is let's go ahead and iron this down flat right here and then where I got the wrinkle I'm just gonna cut that with some scissors Iron that down and then do the next one, cut that one, iron that down, so forth, till they're all flat. And I'll probably trim this piece off because I don't want to wrap around to the other side here. I just want to cover at least half of the bottom. So I think you can see how I've cut this little piece loose and that's going to overlap over the previous one. And then this one will overlap over that one and so forth. You can do it either way, but I'm remember I'm going to have a piece of three mil over all of this on the bottom anyway so it doesn't matter at this point but I just want to make sure I get all the wrinkles out so now I'm just going to trim the excess off this top edge just to make sure we don't have any hanging over because we gotta glue the top on later okay now I'm working on the other side and it just went on really slick no problems Okay, now let's flip it over and do the other half of the bottom. Same thing as before, I'm going to start down here and go on up. Cutting little slots for the wrinkles with scissors. Okay, now I'm working on putting some 3 mil onto the bottom over the other lamination just to make the bottom a little stronger for the skid plate when it lands. 
Okay, all laminated. So next I think I'm going to spray these wood pieces that come with the Polaris XL with some of this H2O black paint here. And while I'm doing that, I think I'm going to spray some of the Depron and just see what happens to that when I spray it with black paint in case I need it later. While I'm outside here and everybody's mowing out in the golf course. But in the spirit of science, I went ahead and soaked these with black H2O paint, Krylon H2O, even the Depron. I just wanted to see if the paint would eat the Depron. Can't tell yet, so we'll just go ahead and let it dry, and then we'll see what the results are. Now one thing I noticed already about this H2O paint, it's H2O latex, Krylon, it's uh runny it don't it doesn't actually soak into the Depron the Depron repels it because I guess it does have some water in it so kinda doesn't soak into the Depron at all I've got runs right now that are just kinda rolling down the side of it I think you can see some down the bottom here just running down there so I don't know what it'll be like when it dries but it does not seem to hurt the Depron. It's been on there for like 10 minutes already. Hasn't dried, but hasn't eaten the foam either. So it looks pretty good. Uh, I went ahead and went back and painted the other side of these parts that came with the Polaris XL. These are the uh, control horns. This is the motor mount. And this is the plate for the pedestal. Now, speaking of the pedestal, I have the parts for the pedestal right here. And I think the pedestal is one of the hardest things to build on the Polaris. It's not difficult, but it's one of the, I would maybe say not hard, but the most confusing, because the pieces are all odd shaped. And uh, I'm just gonna take a look at how they fit together. So here we have the pedestal where the motor mount goes and the horizontal stabilizer goes on top of here and a little vertical stabilizer on top of that. But it comes in six pieces here. Some of them are kind of strange shaped and just looking at the diagram and the directions it isn't really clear how they go together so I just thought I'd run through that. So the first thing you got to do is glue these two pieces together back to back like that. Then you take one of these and glue that right to the other one like this so that this bottom is flush and there is a little piece that sticks out right here and I don't know why that is. I've double checked it. It's just the way it is. I don't know but just make sure this is flush, that's flush and importantly these are flush because that's where it's going to make uh, contact with the plane surface. So those need to be flush. So you get that on there. And then you glue on one of these little things like that. And what that does is uh, make a wire channel for the wires to go through where they go up to the motor and the servo. I guess it's the elevator servo so they go up like that and then because this is two pieces thick you have to put another one on top of that to match it so then you have a deal like this so that's what it looks like and then to finalize it you take another one of these and glue it right here on top of that. Now keep in mind you got to keep it all even and that's the tricky part. Just keep it all even make sure the surfaces here are flush. So I've got four of the pedestal pieces laid out here to spray on some 3M Super 77 and I'm spraying just the sides that I need to stick together. All right, going to go ahead and spray them. Just make sure you keep them on the cardboard. Floor might get a little sticky if you spray the floor. 
So it's good if you don't spray the floor. But you can clean it up, I think, with some alcohol. So there we go. Got that done. Now we'll just let them tack up there a little bit. They can actually sit around for hours and still be usable. Okay. Here's the piece that's got the 3M77 on it. I'll put the box in that little notch like that and take this notch and put that on the box and then just try to line them both up in this corner up here. There's a little time to move it at first and then after that you can't. So as you can see I got a little bit off there. Not bad at the top though. That's a funny thing. The top looks fine. But might have to require a little bit of sanding later. It's pretty close though. Okay, now that piece is done. Okay, now we're going to take that piece and put this one on there. Basically the same deal. I'm going to put the box up against it. And try to line it up. Hey, if it was perfect, they wouldn't think I did it. And it certainly isn't perfect. It's a little bit off once again. Right there. But it'll still work. Get this bottom edge as close as you can. Okay, now we got to get these pieces on. Like that. So I'll take the other piece. The one I put the glue on is going to go right in there. And since this has the glue, I'll stick this one on top of it. I don't believe these pieces are so critical. This is just for the wire guide. Alright, stick them together. And then put them on this one. Just flush with the bottom right here. And flush with the side. It's all going to get sanded anyway. It's got to be rounded and everything like that. So it's not real, real critical. Just get them close. Alright, so that's that. Now, our last piece. Our last piece, and I coated that side. We'll go right here. Even with this, and even with the bottom, hopefully. The big hopeful here, very hopeful on all of it. All right, there we go. And that is about it. Right there. As you can see, It's going to sit like that on the wing when it's done. So now we just need to let the pedestal dry. And this piece here will eventually be for the motor mount, which that pod goes up here and that goes on there somehow. And then you got this piece, which goes down here at the bottom. Oh, I know, it goes like, I guess like this. This slides up to right about there. In other words, right, actually right here, and then it slides all the way up to there. And it sits on it right like that. We'll get to that later. Get your plate.